Consider this molecule. Which carbon atoms are primary carbon atoms? And which ones are secondary? And which ones are tertiary? So let's start with this particular carbon atom. Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? To answer this question, you need to find out how many other carbon atoms are attached to that carbon atom. So we have one, two, three. Therefore, we could say that this carbon atom is a tertiary carbon atom since it's attached to three other carbon atoms. Now, what about this particular carbon atom? Would you describe it as primary, secondary, or tertiary? Well, it's attached to two other carbon atoms, which makes it a secondary carbon atom. This carbon is also secondary. Now, what about this carbon? Notice that it's only connected to one carbon atom, which means that it's primary. Anytime you see a carbon at the end, it's a primary carbon. Now, here's the second question for you. How many secondary hydrogens are there? And how many primary hydrogens are there? Well, let's add the hydrogens to every carbon atom. The tertiary carbon only has one hydrogen atom. The carbon likes to form four bonds. The tertiary carbon is already attached to three carbon atoms, so it only has space for one more bond. Now, the secondary carbon atoms have two hydrogen atoms because they're bonded to two carbon atoms, so they have space to connect to two hydrogen atoms. The primary carbon atoms are attached to three hydrogen atoms. Now, sometimes you may need to identify which hydrogens are primary, which ones are secondary, and which ones are tertiary. A hydrogen that's attached to a tertiary carbon is a tertiary hydrogen. Hydrogens attached to a secondary carbon are secondary hydrogens. And these are primary hydrogens. So as you can see, we have nine primary hydrogens, four secondary hydrogens, and only one tertiary hydrogen. Let's try another example. Identify every carbon atom as being primary, secondary, tertiary, or even quaternary. So we know the carbons at the end, they're primary. That's the first one that's easy to tell. Now what about this particular carbon atom? Notice that it's attached to two other carbon atoms, which means that it's a secondary carbon atom. And what about this one here? We can see that it's attached to three carbon atoms, which means that it's a tertiary carbon atom. And finally, here's the last one. Notice that it's attached to four carbon atoms, which makes it a quaternary carbon. Now, each primary carbon has three primary hydrogens, and there's five primary carbons. So the number of primary hydrogens is going to be 3 times 5, or 15 primary hydrogens. Now, we know that there's two hydrogens attached to a secondary carbon, and there's only one secondary carbon, which means that there's only two secondary hydrogens. There's only one tertiary hydrogen attached to a tertiary carbon. So in this example, there's only one tertiary hydrogen. Notice that there's no such thing as a quaternary hydrogen. A quaternary carbon already has four bonds. There's no space for it to attach itself to a hydrogen. So, so there's no such thing as a, a quaternary hydrogen. Now the next thing that you need to be able to identify are alkyl halides. An alkyl halide is basically an alkane with a halogen. Now, how would you describe this particular alkyl halide? Would you say it's primary, secondary, or tertiary? And let me give you a few more as well.
go ahead, take a minute and pause the video. See if you can identify the different types of alkyl halides that we have. So let's look at the first one. What kind of carbon do we have that's attached to the chlorine atom? Notice that this particular carbon is secondary because it's attached to two other carbon atoms, which means that we have a secondary alkyl halide. Now, in the example on the right, the carbon that bears the bromine atom is a tertiary carbon. And that carbon is attached to three other carbon atoms. So that's a tertiary alkyl halide. And the example on the bottom, the fluorine is attached to a primary carbon, since that carbon is only attached to one other carbon atom. So this compound is a primary alkyl halide. Now what about alcohols? Does the rules apply the same way for alcohols as it does for alkyl halides? The answer is yes. So go ahead, take a minute, and identify the different types of alcohols that we have. So let's look at the first one. Would you characterize it as a primary alcohol, secondary, or a tertiary one? So notice that the OH is attached to a carbon that is secondary. This carbon is attached to two other carbon atoms. So therefore, we have a secondary alcohol. The example in the upper right is also a secondary alcohol. As you can see, we have a secondary carbon that bears the OH. Now what about the example on the lower left? Would you say it's primary, secondary, or tertiary? So what kind of carbon atom do we have here? So just like the others, you can see that this carbon atom is attached to three other carbon atoms, which means that it's tertiary. And the example on the lower right, the carbon that bears the OH is primary. It's attached only to one other carbon atom. So for most groups like alcohols, alkyl halides, and hydrogen atoms, to determine if it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, look at the carbon atom that bears those atoms. And then that's how you can tell. Now, what if we have an amine? What kind of amine do we have? Would you describe it as primary, secondary, or tertiary? Now, let's think about it. Let's analyze the carbon that bears the NH2. We can see that this is a secondary carbon. But is this a secondary amine? What would you say? It turns out that it's not a secondary amine. This particular amine is actually a primary amine. But the question is why? Why is it considered a primary amine? Why is it not a secondary amine like the other ones? The rules for amines is not based on the carbon that bears it. Rather, it's based on the carbon atoms attached to the nitrogen atom. This nitrogen only has one carbon attached to it, and that is why it's considered to be a secondary amine. In the case of alcohols, the OH of an alcohol group will only have one carbon attached to it, always. So that's why alcohols are defined based on the carbon that bears it, because only one carbon atom can bear it. If that's the case, all alcohols will be primary alcohols, and we don't want that. So that's why the alcohols are characterized not by the number of carbon atoms attached to the O, but the number of carbon atoms that are attached to the carbon atom that bears the oxygen. Now amines, they can have multiple carbon atoms attached to it. For example, this is considered a secondary amine because the nitrogen has two carbon atoms attached to it. Let's try this one. What type of nitrogen atom do we have here? Or what type of amine, I should say? So if you count the carbon atoms attached to the nitrogen, notice that we have three. 
So this is a tertiary amine. Now you really don't look at the carbon atoms. And this carbon atom is secondary. This one, I mean, I take it back. That's not secondary. That is a primary carbon. This is a primary carbon, and that one's primary. But this is a tertiary amine. Let's try one more example. What kind of amine do we have here? Notice that the nitrogen is attached to four carbon atoms, so it's quaternary. But notice that the carbon atoms are attached to the nitrogen. Most of them are different. This is primary, this one is primary, this is secondary, and this is tertiary. So we can't really use these carbon atoms to say or to identify and characterize this nitrogen atom. It won't work. So this is known as an ammonium ion. And as you can see, since it has uh, four groups, it's a quaternary ammonium ion, since it has four carbon atoms attached to it.